Have you ever been abandoned, just left alone, to the point where it was hard to breathe? Some of you may have experienced it through a breakup. I've had a couple of those, and usually you experience in the breakup when you're the one who's being broken up with. And there's that sense of, you're leaving me, I'm alone. There's also a time that all of us experience as a child where we know our parents are gonna walk out of the house. Maybe they're just going next door, maybe they're going out to the car, but there's this internal fear, where are you going? Are you coming back? I remember as a kid experiencing that and just this, this terror. And then eventually you're still worried but they've come back enough that you think they're going to come back. The disciples are basically told by Jesus, I'm leaving. And so there's this terror that comes over them. And that's why Jesus has to say, do not be afraid. I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's, he's saying, don't worry. I thought through all of this. So in Luke 24, it talks about Jesus leaving. He led them out uh, as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted for them and was carried up into heaven. Okay, that's, that's way more intense than just walking out the door with the keys. But it says that after they worshiped him and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple praising God. I, I hear that, I see that, but I know that Luke is sharing the most important parts. But there is no chance that as he was leaving, the disciples weren't like, wait, what? Is that it? This is all you're leaving us with? I remember being in the hospital with my child, my first child, and it was just Stephanie and I and him and all of our friends and the family and the nurses. And so they kicked the family and the friends out. So then they left. And then came the moment where the nurse said, okay, bye. And I thought like, what? You're going to leave us here alone with him? And the terror of that responsibility, the terror of that support, that comforter walking out. <sighs> that was a moment. And so I know that in this moment that the disciples had to be like, wait, what? You're leaving? It's still a mess down here. But no matter how, time, how many times we hear it, it's terrifying. In fact, Jesus had been telling them what he was going to do. And I think that as we look here at the, the book of Acts, we need to be reminded that God has not left us. And Jesus communicated over and over again who would replace him, which is actually himself. A little confusing, but let me try to make some sense of that. So in the very first part of Acts, Jesus, it's summarizing what he told them. And he said, um, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you will be my witnesses. And so when you look at the entirety of Acts, which we're going to try to do over the next few weeks, as we're continuing in this series, going through the 50 essential passages in the New Testament, as we're going through Acts, you're going to see God didn't leave. In fact, some people call it the Acts of the Apostles. Probably more accurately, it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because God is the one that's producing the fruit. God is the one that's moving and he's moving through his people because he doesn't leave us as orphans. In fact, in John, Jesus addresses this. He says, I know you guys are afraid because he's just told them and reminded them that he's going to leave. And he says, I'm not going to leave you like the world leaves you. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send you the paraclete. Of course, they had no idea what that meant, but that word para means to come alongside, para, right next to. And it can refer to a helper, a counselor, um, a, 
intercessor, an advocate, uh, a strengthener, an assistant. And so what he's saying is, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Or as it says in other parts of Scripture, the Spirit of Jesus. And why is that important? Because what that means is, is wherever you go, wherever the people of God go, Jesus has not abandoned us because we have the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God is the trippy part of the Trinity that we kind of, well, I can understand a Father and I can understand Jesus as the Son, but you want me the Spirit, the breath, the wind, the smoke, the mist, the what? And we make it more complicated than it really is. Because if you've ever heard the whispers of God, you heard the Holy Spirit. If you've ever been guided into a direction that you knew was from God himself, that direction came from the Holy Spirit. If you've ever been suffering and you were lamenting and you were or praying to God and maybe even yelling at God, and then this desire rose up in you to worship him. You're like, this doesn't make sense. Why? Why? I was just angry. And now, like it happens so often in the Psalms, I want to praise God. That's the Holy Spirit moving in you. All of your interactions here on earth now are with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And so as we look through Acts, we see all of these actions all of the movement of the disciples. And what we're seeing is the acts of the Holy Spirit. We're called branches. That's the name of this community of faith. And for this community of faith, it comes from John 15, 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. That's the definition of what I've just explained. The Holy Spirit, we're connected to Him and He works through us. And that's how fruit is born. And that should be comforting. That should be, that takes the pressure off. One, you know you're not alone, but also you know you have strength. And it's, there's an excitement because where is God going to take us? What's He going to do? What do I get to see God do. And I'll close with this. My, uh, my parents did leave sometime. My mom would leave and my stepfather's best friend, I don't even know how to describe him. I could describe him as a beatnik. I could describe him as a, a druggie. I could describe him as a um, Jeff Spicoli type because I think he might have lived in his van. But he would take this brown VW van with the gold trim. And as a child of like five or so, it seemed like an RV. It was huge. I actually got one in college because I just had this affinity for them because of my experience with Larry. Because he would take my brother and I and he would take us in his VW van and I knew that when we were with Larry, we were safe. He was such a good man from my five-year-old memory. He was kind. He was humorous. He listened to us. And I knew that when we were going on a trip, that not only were we safe, not only were we not alone, but I knew that an adventure was coming. I knew that we were going to go somewhere in this van and he was going to guide us and we'd see things that we'd never seen before. We'd experience things we never thought existed. It was a journey. It was an adventure. And so when Jesus says, you will receive power, that just means we're vessels for his spirit. We're just branches. And he's going to take us on a journey and adventure. And we get to watch him do his thing. We get to watch him flex. We get to watch him show off. 
And so as we look through Acts, I can't wait to get into the details and see some of the ways in which the Holy Spirit takes them on an adventure. The same adventure that he wants to take us on. God bless.